Fiona Flamingo by Rachel Rutia Chu, illustrated by Kate Jeffrey. On a beautiful sunny afternoon where life was simply the best, a little flamingo named Fiona hatched from an egg in a nest. Little Fiona grew up making lots of friends. They played flamingo games from day's start to day's end. As the time passed, the birds all became stronger. They also got pinker and their feathers grew longer. They turned pinker and pinker with each feather they grew. They got bigger and bigger until some of them flew. Fiona remained featherless until it happened one night. She woke up with feathers, but they were all bright white. The other flamingos gasped and stared at her in shock. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. They wildly began to squawk. Her friends looked at the white feathers, not knowing what to think. You're not the right color. Flamingos are supposed to be pink. With everyone shouting, Fiona be began to get scared. She looked at her feathers and then she looked at theirs. You don't have to be so loud and please don't make a scene. That's when Fiona started shaking and her feathers turned to green. When her friends saw the change, they squawked louder and meaner. Fiona got more anxious and her feathers grew greener. Her friends looked at the green feathers, not knowing what to think. Stop being so silly, Fiona. Flamingos are supposed to be pink. Oh no, said Fiona. This is worse than just bad. But her friends kept on squawking and then Fiona got mad. You're making me angry, she jumped and furiously said. That's when Fiona started yelling and her feathers turned to red. The flock became silent, hoping things would get better, but Fiona got madder and her feathers grew redder. Her friends looked at the red feathers, not knowing what to think. Don't you think you should calm down now? Flamingos are supposed to be pink. They all rushed to hug her, and now Fiona felt bad. Her anger was fading, but now she felt sad. She whimpered and cried, I'm all mixed up in hue. That's when Fiona started sobbing and her feathers turned to blue. The flock watched from afar and their concerns grew too, truer, but Fiona just got sadder and her feathers grew bluer. Her friends looked at the blue feathers, not knowing what to think. Just what kind of bird are you? Flamingos are supposed to be pink. No one can cheer her up, so instead they stayed away. That's when Fiona got lonely and her feathers turned to gray. A young chick floated up with a gaze so pure and true. I hope my feathers change colors when I'm as big as you. Fiona flashed a happy smile and her feathers erupted in color. It was a surprise to everyone. No feather was like any other. Pink, white, and green, red, blue, and gray. She was every single color now, and that's the way she'd stay. The entire flock gathered around and Fiona gave a big wink. I guess we've all learned a lesson here. Flamingos don't have to be pink. The end. Hi everyone. So we finished reading our Fiona the Flamingo story. We're gonna turn this into our very own art project. What we're gonna do is start off by drawing a flamingo. Then we'll talk about some colors and have some fun using some new art materials to add color to our flamingos. But first we should really take a look at what flamingos look like because they are a very unique bird to say the least. Notice that it has a very curved neck, his legs even bend backwards. He's got a very large beak. I mean, this flamingo's pink. How many birds do you know that are pink? 
if I were to start drawing this flamingo, my first step would be to figure out what kind of shapes I see here. So using a couple simple lines, I can take the idea of this head and that long curved neck and his big body. And I see a line there. I can also take a look at his legs. There's a straight line and an angular line. Do these lines look like anything to you? Over here, looks kind of like a two. What do the legs look like? Maybe a backwards four. So starting off with a line, but my four is going the wrong way. And that looks like it might be a pretty good start to draw in our own flamingo. Let's try it. So taking what we just talked about with looking at our picture of a real flamingo, we're going to use some of those numbers to help us create a simple drawing. Remember we have the number two and the number four down here. When we're drawing, please make sure you're using a pencil you want to be able to erase. I have mine in marker here so that we can see it nice and clear, but I'm gonna set that aside and go ahead and start fresh with you guys. If I go ahead and create a large two in the center of the page, that begins the neck and back of my flamingo there. Now I come in and kind of mirror those lines but make them a little bit curvier I can go ahead and create the rest of my flamingo's body. Finish that off there with a little curve to make his head. And then a big old beak. Remember, flamingos have a big beak. It kind of almost looks a little upside down to me. Then down here, for his legs, we'll start off by giving ourselves a four. But remember, this four is backwards. I'm going to go ahead and draw a big old eye right here. I'll be able to color it in, maybe a little bit of shiny spots on the eye there as well. I might even draw some eyelashes if I'd like. For the legs, I'd like to go back and make them a little bit thicker. So he's got a knee right here. I'm going to draw a circle for that knee. And his other knee is going to be a little bit below where that four crosses over. So those little circles are his knees. And I can go back and add a second line to make that leg fat. And same thing with this line, add a second line so that I have something to color in later. I'm gonna try to jump behind that four, erase that little extra line there, and then go ahead and continue it as well. And then I can do just a nice little squiggly line for some water. And then flamingos have webbed feet. So I'll start off with my three toes, kind of curve them down, and then just do a little loop to attach them. My flamingo's almost done. I'm gonna give him just a little fluffy wing there. I can even add some layers if I like, because I really liked Fiona's nice fluffy wings. And that's all I need to do. Even notice between my two drawings, they look a little bit different, and yours might also, and that is just fine. All right, so we have our drawing done in pencil. Um, I wanna point out some of the other things that you have in your art kit. You have a paint palette. This is watercolor paint, which means that you add water to it to use it. Um, you, you also have paint brushes in there as well as a permanent marker. Some things that you'll need on your own are a cup of water. I always tell people only fill that cup halfway because that's less water to spill but it's enough to do what you need to do. You can change it as necessary. If your water gets dirty go get fresh water. And you'll also need a paper towel to clean and dry your brush. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this permanent marker and go over my lines. I want to use a permanent marker 
so that I have nice heavy outlines to my flamingo. And no matter what colors I use, I'll be able to see it really well. And little wings. It's always a good idea to go back and erase any pencil marks. All right, and now I'm ready to begin painting. When painting with watercolors, you will get your brush wet and you add water into the paint palette directly so that you can get your color. So I have a nice bright pink here. But remember, part of our story is about flamingos don't have to be pink. So I'm going to use a whole bunch of colors for my flamingo. I'm going to clean my brush, dry it, make sure that it's not changing colors on the paper towel here. And then I can go ahead and grab some other colors. Notice that the color is very, very wet. Wet colors next to wet colors will blend in together. I'm going to clean my brush before I go back to that yellow because I don't want this new color to end up over here. So keep everything separated by washing your brush, making sure it's clean. Also notice when I'm painting, I am not smashing the bristles of the brush. Do not smash them. That's a really bad thing to do. I should always use my brush in the direction the bristles go, something like that. Because I already know that when I put wet colors next to wet colors, they're going to blend and bleed, I'm going to let this dry for a little while. Because if I start to paint the background while this is still wet, all of those colors are going to run out into the background. So here's an example of what we don't want to happen. We don't want that pink to burst out into the blue sky or that yellow to bleed out of there as well. So taking a day to let this dry, or at least a, a little while, is a good idea, and I'll come back to it later. All right, so my flamingo had a chance to dry a bit. I did use my smaller brush when I was painting my flamingo. This is more of a detail brush, this round brush is. Um, this is a flat brush. This will work much better for filling in my larger areas. While I was waiting for this to dry, I did change out my water, got myself some fresh water. And once again, I can go ahead, go ahead and add my color. And if I have a nice amount of water on my brush, I can get a lot done at once. You might want to make sure you have some newspaper or scrap paper under you while you work so you don't have to paint on your table. Give your, you don't want extra cleanup for yourself. And I can start at the top of the page. You can have some fun with this. I'm just going to give mine a nice blue sky for now.
I want to work quickly so I can get a lot of color down without it drying. I take that color and spread it out. I can go a little bit slower as I go around the body. If you're having trouble getting into some of those smaller spots, this would be a good chance to use that small brush again. You can switch between your brushes. have a little fun with this since I'm close to done. Oh, let's use my small brush for that spot. Let's get wet first, a little bit more of that blue. If I get too much color down, I can dry my brush and I can soak up that extra water and help it blend. And if it's still wet enough, I can even take my paper towel and see if I can make some little clouds or something on there. Don't forget, oops, don't forget that little space down here. can be done or I can go back and add some details. Maybe there's a little bit of swamp grass or my flamingo here. Add a little extra water and there you go. Just a couple reminders before you put everything away and you're done with your painting. Uh, make sure that your palette is clean. If you did get a little bit of paint that shouldn't be there, say there's a little bit of green in this yellow right here, I don't know if you can see that, not very much, but there is a little bit. You can take a clean paper towel and wipe any of that color out. If you got any paint on the lid, make sure you wipe that off as well. Please let this fully dry before returning.